On behalf of the teachers here at North Star Academy, I would like to thank you for coming and watching this video with me. It's just a quick tour of our Algebra 1 course. I realize that for a lot of students and maybe some parents too, Algebra 1 seems like a pretty scary course. Maybe they think it's the one course where they suddenly don't understand anything about math anymore. Or maybe they are afraid that it's going to be the hardest course that they've ever taken. At North Star Academy, I want you to know that our teachers don't think that this is true about Algebra 1. We're excited to have you with us. We want you to feel welcomed and we want you to be excited to journey with us as we see how math can tell us a story and we see how math is connected to God and the world that he created. I know that choosing an online high school math curriculum can be very challenging these days. There are so many options available. So we will take a few minutes and we're going to go through some highlights of the Algebra 1 course together. And I hope that will help you make your decision. I also hope that you notice as we go through our tour that at North Star Academy, we're interested not only in high quality math standards as part of content, but that we are also focused on developing our students. Our school's ESOs or expected student outcomes um, correlate very closely with standards for mathematical practice. And we emphasize these throughout the course. These skills are necessary for students to become successful in not only mathematics, but also in the rest of their life. These skills include problem solving, critical thinking, quality communication skills, and also the ability to grow in Christ-like character such as developing perseverance while problem solving. I hope that you enjoy your tour. Let's get started. Hello, so here we are in our Algebra 1 course. You'll notice that our Algebra 1 course is based on high school math standards, and we're going to be using the 2019 version of Big Ideas Math as our major resource. There is a hard copy book that you can buy from our school bookstore. There's also a free online, just really basic version of the book that I would like to show you really quickly. There will be links to this book and instructions in the course so that your students can find it whenever they need it. Basically, it will bring them to this page. They'll choose the program. It's the Common Core 2019 program. The Common Core is not the way in which the math is necessarily taught. It's just which standards we are covering. So um, that's the reason the Common Core is in the title. We um, can then go to that standard. You'll notice here there are also free and easy access resources for a solution guide that will give you solutions to some of the odd problems. Those are the ones that we usually do for homework. So students can check their answers and see if they're on the right track. Um, and then if they're not, they can actually see it worked out. So maybe they can find out where they did something wrong if they can't figure it out on their own. There are also, also some example videos that they can access from this page. So we're going to go to the Common Core 2019 and once we're there, we'll scroll down and just click on the Algebra 1 book. And when this opens up, it's basically laid out just like the hard copy book. You've got the cover and you can go to chapter one. You can click on your topic and it, you've got the different pages that are right there. So if you go to page four, you're right in the book. You're seeing exactly what somebody with the book is going to be seeing on page four. So I reference in the course, not only the page number, but I also reference the title of the section, which you can see down at the bottom of the page. And I also reference um, the different sections of the lesson, which are these bolded headings so that students will know exactly where to look um, for certain key information that they need to take with them. So it's a really easy access. Some students really prefer having a hard copy, so that's why I wanted to make sure we also have a hard copy available if you would rather have that. All right, let's get back to our course. So now that we're back in our course, I wanna talk just a minute about the main concepts that we'll be covering. So this is our first semester, and we'll see that we'll cover expressions and equations. We'll cover um, ratios, proportions, and percents, inequalities, functions, Linear, linear equations from all sorts of different angles. And then in the second semester, we'll move on and we'll cover systems of linear equations, polynomial equations and factoring, 
quadratic functions, exponential functions, radical functions, and then we'll close out with a display analysis or data analysis and display. So a small statistics unit at the end of semester two. So really some good foundational knowledge that we're gonna need for upcoming geometry and algebra two courses are found right here. I feel like all of these will lay a solid foundation for our students to move forward in their math careers. All right, let's look at just how the weeks are laid out. My week one is a basic introduction for the students. It teaches them just our basic expectations of the course, um, procedures of the course, getting started, introducing one another. But in week two, we'll actually start to cover more of our content. So I'll click here. Each week begins with a basic overview page, a little introduction to the week, some questions to help students start thinking about the main concepts for the week, including um, questions that focus in on our biblical truth for the unit, and then some objectives of what students should be able to do by the end of the week. After students have prepared themselves for what's coming up this week, they can go ahead and start in the lessons. They're broken down by day. So we'll have day one. And in day one, you'll see that again, there's a short introduction for the specific content that's covered on this day. And then a to-do list of the items that we're going to do um, in the lesson and then anything they might need to turn in. As the student moves forward, they will get access to the lesson. And you'll see that this lesson starts with some opening questions. Sometimes it will just start with an introduction and we'll always start just kind of giving an overview, maybe showing some connections for students so that they'll be able to tie these concepts together. And then there will be some definite objectives for the students for the lesson and some key vocabulary or concepts listed that will help them focus on what they need to learn. Then there's a short description of how they're going to be learning during the day. So one of the key aspects of Algebra 1 is teaching students how to be good learners. That includes taking notes, how to make sure that they're practicing what they're learning every day in mathematics, that they're checking um, what they've practiced to make sure they're doing it correctly, trying to figure out what they did wrong on their own first, and if they can't, making sure that they ask questions and ask good questions so that they can get answers to their specific problems. So I've set up some structures that will help students do that. One of those structures is including notes, pages, kind of like some guided notes or doodle notes for students to use. These are not necessarily required for you to print every single one. Um, students could recreate this in their own notebook just by kind of drawing it out on their own paper, but it helps them make sure that they get all of the main concepts of the lesson and they don't accidentally skip something that's really important. So I like to include those not with every lesson, but I've included them a fair um, bit throughout the course. We'll also see as we move through that many of the lessons will also include videos that um, a, a North Star Academy teacher has made. One of those is found in day two, in fact. And whenever we open day two, we're on evaluating expressions and the order of operations. Again, a short introduction. Anytime students see the little light bulb, that's going to focus them in on our biblical integration, objectives, key vocabulary concepts, talking to them about how to get started, and then the lesson itself. So in this case, in this lesson, they're not going to be using their book. All the information is actually on this page since it's a review lesson. And they'll go through and we'll see there are videos in the lessons, there are helpful hints in the lessons, um, there are further examples um, and further helpful hints. And then we always include some, an opportunity for students to practice what they have been learning. So I encourage them to always practice and write neatly, show all their work, box their answers, and make sure that they're keeping their practice problems in their notebook so that they've got notes and they've got their practice all together. It makes it easy to review if when they need to do that. So in this case, they have a worksheet since it was not coming from our book. Um, most of the lessons that are also based on book material 
will reference the students to do practice problems out of the book that they can check. But this one includes a worksheet and it also includes keys attached. And then what you'll notice is down at the bottom of every lesson, there will be a section that says pause and reflect. So sometimes students just need to pause and reflect and make a mental note and they don't have to submit anything. But I would say um, probably 75% of the time, students are going to have something that they need to submit. Um, this it can may be a reflection of what they learned. It may be a picture of their notes. It might be um, showing their work for one of the problems that they did, or maybe a pool of friend where I work a problem incorrectly and they have to tell me what I did wrong and then correct it. So a lot of different types of what we would call ticket out the door items for students. But these are opportunities for the teacher to assess how the student is learning and be able to give them feedback. And so it's really important to teachers and to students to read that feedback and be learning on a daily basis, not only from doing, but also from interacting with the teacher through that feedback. So again, a lot of our lessons will be um, similar to this and we'll use either all the lesson found in the on the page itself or we'll also reference material in the book um, and get us give supporting resources in the lesson. We'll also notice that it's important to be able to discuss with each other. So sometimes we'll be sharing our thinking. And so this is a case where we would be sharing our thinking on the discussion board and it's about the different algebraic properties and they have a choice. They could illustrate one of the properties. They could actually do a video showing one of the properties. Um, maybe acting it out or showing it with pieces of candy or something like that. Um, or they can write out an explanation um, themselves and they post it and then they look at each other's and they comment on them. And it just helps us get to know each other and it also helps students to be able to kind of reteach what they've learned um, to someone else. So we do, we also make sure that we include opportunities for this type of sharing in the class throughout, not on a daily basis but on a regular, probably chapter by chapter basis. Again, one of the main things that we want to emphasize at North Star is the fact that you can see God in all aspects of life, and that includes mathematics. And there are some amazing ways we can see God in mathematics. And we'll notice that the focus of this first chapter was God being a God of order, and um, that the rules that we see in mathematics mirror the rules that God sets into place in nature around us. And students actually have an opportunity to discuss this with each other down here in week three, day four. And it gives them, in this case, a flip grid discussion. This is a, a video discussion where students will video their response. It's super easy to use. It's just a click of a button. And they're going to be responding to a verse and some prompts that are listed here that will help them um, just reflect and think about God's creation and how we see characteristics of God through his creation, including mathematics. Of course, knowing how to follow a formula is one thing, but knowing how math applies to the real world is also very important. So we try to make sure that students are faced with some sort of application or real world problem solving situation in most of the chapters throughout the course. In this first chapter, we can find one in week four, day four, solving equations in the real world. And whenever we click on this specific item, we see that there is an attachment here that will take students to a project. And it just walks them through a real world situation where the same information that they've been learning can be applied to the situation. And it walks them through it and also gives them a chance to reflect on um, what they learned and to see how it could be applied to the real world. So I love to be able to have students interact with those sorts of concepts. These sorts of real world application projects count as a weekly assessment. All of our weeks have some sort of assessment in them, whether it's a little mini project in some of the weeks or some of the weeks have a weekly quiz. And then at the end of each chapter, we'll find that we have a chapter test. The important thing to know about our quizzes and our tests is that all of our quizzes and all of our tests include multiple choice and free response questions. 
because we want to make sure that on free response questions, students are practicing being able to um, show all of their work and justify and explain their answers. And so that gives us an opportunity for students to do just that. And then they submit their work to go along with the free response questions. And part of their grade from, for that specific free response part of the test comes from the actually looking at the work itself. One more thing that I would like to show you today is that from time to time, students will also be involved in a situation where they do an exploration on a topic. So I strongly believe that one of the main ways students learn best is when they're put in a situation to be asked a question and then having to go searching for an answer or start looking for patterns and then be able to describe those patterns verbally and also mathematically. And so we'll see that, a, that in several places, in two or three places in each um, semester, students are given a lesson in which they are just exploring a concept. And so the instructions will walk them through this process. So in this case, there's a document attached. And when the students open the document, it will basically allow them to have a set of instructions. And as they follow the instructions, it prompts them with certain questions. And those questions can help them look for the patterns and then help them describe those patterns. When students learn this way, when they come up with the rules themselves from observation, they're much more likely to remember these rules in the long run. And this specific lesson includes a topic that really applies to so many other functions that we study in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2. So if they can learn this concept well with this lesson, then it's gonna carry over with them. If they just went in and learned rules out of the book, they may not see the connection between this lesson and a lesson that we get to in the second semester. But hopefully after having worked with it themselves and wrestled with it themselves, they'll understand a lot better. So I hope that this quick tour has excited you about our Algebra 1 course at North Star Academy. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to our office. We hope to see you in class soon.